Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and this is video number nine in our Entrepreneur Series, and this one is specifically about establishing a legal foundation. So I'm gonna talk about a lot of things that legally you should be considering if you're starting up a new business or you're looking at revamping your, your business plan, and there's a lot of definitions that I want to talk about and some concepts to help you make the best decisions possible. So some things in this video that I'm going to talk about are legal forms of business and the best design for your uh, business. Uh, talk about some basic contractual ideas that you should consider. The role of leases and legal formation of new businesses. Uh, some basic laws, rules, and regulations uh, that help benefit new businesses. I am not a lawyer, and I'm saying that right up front. Uh, you should really consider talking to a CPA and a lawyer when you're putting your business together. The purpose of this video is to talk about some considerations that you should think about as you're putting together your small business plan. So again, I want to say I am not a lawyer and to totally disclose, uh, but uh, I do have a, a doctorate in business and work with business owners for, um, for about two decades now, and so I want to help you make the best decisions possible. I'm going to talk about copyrights and trade trademarks and patents and how important they are. Uh, insurance is another consideration. I'll briefly talk about that and talk a little bit about uh, an effective board or advisors or board of director. So uh, when you're establishing uh, a, uh, a legal entity, you really want to consider contracts, leases, regulations, licensing uh, requirements, copyrights, trademarks, patents, insurance, and so we're going to talk about each of those. There really are three essential basic uh, forms of legal business entities. One is a sole proprietorship, uh, partnership, um, and general limited liability, and then corporations makes up the third one. And in corporations, there's type C, S, and LLCs that I'll be talking about in this video just briefly. Uh, a sole proprietorship really is the simplest form of a business organization and uh, they really are characterized by the fact that the person who owns the business and the business itself are really treated as the same entity and that really is a key concept for sole proprietorship. Uh, the, the major benefit of that is that you, it's really easy to form and dissolve. Um, uh, some disadvantages is that there really is only uh, one owner and that owner has personal liability and uh, the value in a, a sole proprietorship is limited. Uh, these are really popular for those people who are really not sure about the, the business, who, ha who have a, a very, very small business, and they have uh, low costs and low risks. So uh, with sole proprietorships, you probably know people who own a sole proprietorship and uh, something that may help develop the business a little bit more is a partnership which is very similar to a sole proprietorship but uh, the, the business is really uh, includes the ideas uh, of more than one person usually it's it's two or three people in a general partnership it really is formed by two or more people um, it's simple but you, you really should have some clarity in what's involved. And so you need to have some kind of agreement, and it probably is best if you have a written agreement. You need to be clarify who is involved in their contribution specifically, how profits, losses, and draws will be treated. Um, be able to describe how one partner can buy out another partner, how new partners are brought in, and then how disputes are going to be settled. Uh, I use the term draw, and in business, uh, it really is about uh, an owner taking cash in advance, um, like a salary or bonus or expected year and distribution, for instance. And so the term that we use in business is a draw if you own your own business. Uh, in a general partnership, uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages. And some advantages are that owners report profit or losses on their personal income tax. 
Uh, some business expenses can be claimed and it's easy to establish and, and dissolve a business with a general partnership. Yeah, some disadvantages that uh, your partner and you are jointly liable for all debts and partners have the responsibility to watch out for the best interests of other partners. So um, partnerships can be hard if you don't like the person that you're in business with or the people that you're in business with. So that, that can be a challenge. With a limited partnership or an LLP, uh, there really are two classes of partners. And with a general partner, um, you have uh, limited partners who can work for the firm but cannot actively manage. And then one partner must be the general partner. So in a general partner or an LLP, the individual considered the manager of the firm uh, has limited liability for the debts, judgments against the firm. Corporations, uh, this is a big one, and there are, are essentially three different types. And founders can only lose on their original investment. So that's one of the major benefits of having a a uh, corporation. There's a subchapter S corporation, a subchapter C corporation, and a limited liability corporation or an LLC which is a relatively new form of corporation. Uh, chances are you have worked for a corporation and there are lots of corporations out there. One of the biggest is AT&T for instance and uh, there are some advantages of working for a corporation. So in a subchapter S corporation, um, this one treats the firm as, uh, as an entity separate from the individuals. This allows the owners to treat the income as they would if the firm were a sole proprietorship or a partnership and it has limitations in the number of type of shareholders. So some advantages of Chapter S Corporation is that the owner's liability is limited. It has potential tax benefit. It's relatively easy to form compared to a Subchapter C. And it makes it more legitimate in the market. Some disadvantages of a Subchapter S Corporation is that the, it's kind of cumbersome and expensive to form. And you, the, the shareholder numbers are limited. You know, it's limited to 75. And current and significant limitation for a company uh, that, that wishes to go public. On the other hand, Subchapter C Corporation is an organization that treats the firm as a unique entity responsible for its own taxes and there are no limitations to shareholder participation and the owners are protected beyond their equity investment. So what's required for subchapters S or C? Uh, you need to have corporate name. Uh, you need to have a specific location for corporate headquarters. Uh, the general nature of business needs to be clarified. Names, addresses, and titles of all founders are required a time horizon for the firm's existence, uh, authorized stock and capital need to be clarified, and then bylaws of the organization need to be created. In an LLC or a limited liability corporation, uh, this uh, limits your liability essentially and it allows more investors. So uh, it allows other corporations to hold stock. Uh, you may have as few as one member. It has some flexible flexibility with profits. It allows owners uh, to avoid double taxation. And it's a relatively low cost of a corporation to form. And uh, you need to know that some states uh, have some, some limits that, that you need to consider and, and of course advise an attorney to figure out. Speaking of attorneys, contracts are something that are important. You could have verbal handshake contracts, but if you ever have to go to court, uh, it's one person's word against another person's word. That why This is why I highly advise that you hire an attorney to create a legal and binding contract. And essentially, that's an agreement, a written agreement 
uh, between two parties uh, about specific activities that relate related to your business. Some things that contracts should include. One, parties who are involved in that, you know, clarification of that. Uh, what each party agrees to do and for what consideration. Uh, when the transaction is to take place. Uh, the timing of payments. Timing of activities and length of the contract. Any warranties. Uh, the contract, uh, how the contract can be terminated whether the contract is transferable or not, and then which state's laws apply specifically in the contract. Um, leases are something else that must be considered. And uh, it's essentially a contract that clarifies exactly what is being leased, when the lease can be renewed, who is responsible for any improvements, uh, who is responsible for maintenance, who carries uh, liability insurance and how much. Um, it clarifies can the landlord enter your place of business and what procedures for addressing and resolving uh, problems are involved. And again, uh, attorneys can help uh, create a, a legal document that helps clarify the things that are specific to your business. Um, leases are truly are beneficial to organizations because they, they help protect uh, long-term businesses. Uh, they're multi-dimensional and uh, they really sh you should be careful in crafting and before signing a lease. And this helps prevent problems um, with any legal um, things that may come up. Um, let's talk now, shift gears, and talk about how laws, rules, and regulations benefit new businesses. Um, generally speaking, uh, there are fewer regulations for smaller businesses than larger businesses. This could be good news. And it, it really does vary on, on the regulations for whatever type of business you're in. We'll talk about that. And some regulations um, apply to all organizations regardless of size. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you have a, an, an employer identification number and you need to be aware of any payroll requirements. Uh, some locations have unique regulations and most locations have uh, local uh, information resources available to you. The ADA or the Americans with Disabilities Act is something that uh, managers must uh, adhere to if you uh, have 15 or more employees and it makes employers responsible for reasonable accommodation. You know, creating new buildings in different states is not a reasonable accommodation, but you know, providing interpreters might be a reasonable accommodation or making adaptations to computers so that they can be used is important. So retail and office space must be accessible. This is a general ADA uh, requirement and then uh, requirements uh, changes must be monitored. So uh, it really is important that we honor uh, and respect people with disabilities. Uh, they could provide significant value to your organization just like any other person. Um, you need to, if you are in the food business, you need to make sure that you consider health inspections and displaying health code grades and liquor licensing if you carry liquor and calorie information and ADA certifications. So um, these types of things really must be considered and adhered to if that's part of the laws in your areas. Licensing, there's lots of different licenses that business owners must consider. Uh, a business license for your local area, a local, like a local liquor license, say that 10 times, occupation, uh, occupancy permits, a federal liquor license, city and council, county business licenses, sign permits, uh, OSHA permits for food handling, and then uh, a fire safety permit. So all of these have organizations that enforce um, that and a license says that you've met the standards and you agree to meeting those standards. Uh, copyrights are something else that you must consider. And um, 
in, with a copyright, it, it's simply a, uh, a way of protecting intellectual property. And like I've written books and they have copyrights on them. And I've had people call and ask if they can use my information according to these copyrights. I uh, have grants. Uh, it grants ownership on creative materials generated such as books, magazines, advertising copy, music, artwork, virtually any creative product whether published or unpublished. Uh, trademarks. Uh, trademarks are a claim of intellectual property that's associated with specific businesses and this may be the same of the firm uh, and uh, it, it's a, a symbol, a TM, that represents the firm or the names of its products. With a patent, it's a claim of intellectual property that covers a specific innovation. Uh, about patents, they're good for 20 years and they are granted uh, on a first-to-file basis and uh, they can be expensive to obtain and maintain and there are, are generally three types of patents, utility, design, and plant. Uh, it can be uh, a potential entry barrier for uh, many small business owners and are only recognized in the countries where they're filed. Insurance is something else that should be considered as a small business owner. Uh, insurance is, is a great way to limit your liability concerns and there are several basic types of insurance. There's property insurance which covers the buildings, fixtures, and inventory. Uh, you have to consider whether or not it's going to be replaced at replacement cost or the current value. And then coverage for fire, windstorms, hail, smoke. Uh, these things are standard, uh, but what happens if there's a flood in your area? Uh, so special policies co uh, can cover floods and earthquakes, so these are things for you to consider. Uh, other types of insurance are, are liability insurance, which covers lawsuits resulting from accidents, or product liability insurance, uh, which is also obtainable. Uh, bonding, it covers damage done by employees, either intentional or unintentional. And then workers' compensation insurance, and this covers liability for workers injured on the job, and it really can be a major um, expense. When you are, div let's switch gears and talk about an effective board just for the sake of time. Um, a board of advisors or boards of directors help. Uh, new business people foresee uh, legal problems. Uh, they are very important uh, for corporations who must have a board of directors and in new corporations the shareholders and board of directors are very often the same individuals. With your board of advisors um, you get to choose who sits on that and it's usually the founders regardless of the legal form chosen and it's composed of, of individuals outside of the business who help advise the founder. Uh, you can choose advisors with experience in local licensing requirements, industry regulations, startup experience and success, uh, financial and accounting needs of new startups, and HR experience, especially established uh, personnel criteria. You know, what employees can make or break your organization. So, uh, this has been about 18 minutes in this video and uh, essentially we talked about forms of business, contracts, leases, regulations, licensing requirements, copyrights, trademarks, patents, insurance and board advisors and directors. So, I hope that uh, you found something of value in this video to, to take away and apply as you are building your small business plan and I hope that you've enjoyed the video and more importantly I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr. Paul Gerhardt.